Hello everyone. I welcome you all in this live tutorial session number five. So in today's session, we are going to discuss about the sizing of PV. So before that, till now we have discussed about about the PV cell. And then we have discussed about the series and inter parallel interconnection of the PV cell. And then we have estimated the energy from the sun. And we have also solved problems based on the incident energy estim estimation on the earth. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about the sizing of PV and battery. So let us begin the session. So as, as like the previous session, first we have a quick revision about the big five and then we will solve some problems. So here we are going to do the sizing of sizing for PV array. So this PV has applications with storage and without storage. So first we will see the with a storage system and then we will sorry first we will see without a storage system and then we will see with a storage system especially with the battery. Now let us see this case that when this PV power is directly connected to the grid and how this, uh, how we can see this case, like what is the net cost that can customer, that customer has to pay or the, if this is a surplus uh, PV power uh, generation, then grid, uh, then the utility grid has to, has to pay the customer. So here, this is a customer, and so this is customer, and so here we can see this uh, uh, from the it is demanding power from the grid, and that is connected to through this energy meter, and the energy meter reads about reads this uh, amount of energy as watt hour load, and now. This has a uh, rooftop solar PV installed on the roof of a house, on the customer house, and then it is sending back this energy that is coming from the solar PV array to this grid. So again, this energy meter reads it, it as watt hour PV. So what is the net cost that the customer will see? Like you are you are taking energy from the grid and you are providing back the energy to the grid with the, this PV power, with this PV power generation. So the net cost will be watt hour load into C load minus watt hour PV into CPV. So here this C load and CPV are the tariff for load and PV respectively. So there, there are different tariff rate that the grid is providing power and the, when you are providing the power to the grid, then there will be different tariff. So these are having different tariff, tariff rate and that is generated by C load and CPV. So now if you want to have it as a net cost, so what amount of energy you, you need to produce such that they know, they know, uh, uh, they know uh, how, how you can say they know electricity charge come back to your house. So for that you have to you have to make the PV power sizing such that it will generate the amount of energy equal to this value that is the watt hour load into C load upon CPV. So this is the criteria for zero net cost means you will not get any uh, get energy get any energy bill from the grid from the utility grid. So now let us come how we will design the PV array size without a storage. So first what we need to do first we have to determine this HAT for the place and in that HAT after knowing the HAT for the place for the different number of days. So here this uh, This N is denoting number of days.
so after knowing the this profile energy incident on a place so after knowing the energy incident of place with atmospheric effect and based on the tilted uh, tilted plate uh, tilted plate installed on the surface so the what will the brushed case so brushed case will be h h80 minimum so this is the brushed case energy available on the flat plate array with atmospheric effects on any day in the year so we have to we have to take care of this brushed case if you are if you are if your pv sizing is perfect for this brushed case then it will work fine for the any case so uh, the most important point is that our design should be capable of delivering the full load requirement even during the least insulation day that is the brushed case so what should be the taken care in mind our design such that it can deliver full load requirement and it can work even in the brushed day that means it is having least insulation day so that is that we got from this hat minimum now suppose you have a this pv array on the so on your house that is that's value that is area is a meter per square and we are taking it as the standard insulation and we are uh, assuming that this is a standard insulation energy coming from the sun so the what will the output power from this pv array so the output power, power from the pv array will be the efficiency into the input power and input power is 1 kilowatt per meter square and area, area per meter square here we have assumed this a standard insulation now based on this uh, height minimum based on this h80 minimum we have find the uh, equivalent number of hours with respect to standard insulation so let us assume this small h at 80 minimum is the equivalent number of hours if we are we are if we are having this standard insulation of 1 kW per meter square so in that case energy output will be efficiency into 1 kW per meter square into area per meter square and the number of hours equivalent to this hat minimum that is brushed energy brushed case energy available on a place so we can write that energy output equal to efficiency into area into hat minimum and so uh, therefore we can write the energy output from pv will be watt hour pv equal to efficiency into area into hat minimum therefore this we can find the area of this solar pv array that we need to install हेलो एनी वन वॉन्ट टू स्पीक समथिंग इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यू कैन आस्क यू कैन इंटरप्ट मी वाइल गोइंग थ्रू लेक्चर सो राइट नाउ वी आर गोइंग थ्रू दिस how we will size the pv array without energy storage system so here we are we have find this area so this is not the actual area that is required on the ground this is we call intrinsic area that is the area of the solar pv array so what amount of the area will capture this solar pv array if you install for a certain application so this is the energy output from the pv array what are pv upon efficiency into hat minimum so here we get the intrinsic area now what is the actual area that we need on the earth for getting that equivalent amount of power from this solar pv array so that we for that we have to take this uh, take this extra area that is coming between the solar pv array so what is this extra area that we call it as maintenance area like uh, in between the solar pv array we have a gap for maintenance and for cleaning and other purposes for installation of uh, so pv array this gaps are necessary so for that this we assume it as 30% of the intrinsic area therefore this estate area is 1.3 times of intrinsic area so this is the actual area we required for a certain for a certain pv application with having uh with having uh, this uh, hat minimum known at the at that place and we have we are knowing this efficiency of solar pv cell that you are going to install
So you can refer to this NPTEL lecture, Mohan Chinnabaram. You can refer to this uh, Swam portal. Here we are having all the sessions. Like if you go this uh, problem solving session, then you go to this problem solving session recording. And here, if you click on this, then you will got all the PMRF, TA, YouTube link, and this presentation folder link. So here, there are three PMRF, TAs are allotted for this course. So you can go through this YouTube link or presentation folder link. Either way you want to learn, you can take the help from these links. Yeah, all right. So this is the first time I am I am this PMRF TA for this course. Uh, previously, I was TA in different course. So I have not taken this uh, course earlier. So this is the first time for me. So I hope you learn, you got this, uh, how we will size the PV array without energy storage system. So here there is no linkage of energy storage system. Now let us see with this PV sizing with a storage system. So first question comes here in mind, why we require a storage system? that without a storage system, can we have this PV array sizing? Can we not install this PV system? So it is very uh, unpractical to install PV system without energy storage system, because we know this PV array depends highly on the nature. And this is intermittent source of energy. So based on if there is cloudy day or something interruption happens, then you cannot get power from this PV area. So like we have to we have to use some energy buffer so that so that we can store the extra amount of power that PV uh, that PV provides to load. So the extra amount that the extra amount after providing the power to the load, then we can store in the battery. And when there is when there is not rainy day or something cloudy day. So on that day, we can take power from this battery from this energy buffer. So this energy buffer can be taken as batteries and this battery can be classified in two types. The first is primary primary cells and second is secondary cells. I hope you all know this about this primary type batteries and secondary type batteries. So the primary type is that that can be discharged only once and the secondary type that can be discharged and charged several times. If I keep solar panel exposed to sun and keep it open, will it damage the solar panel? No, it will not damage the solar panel. Will it reduce the life? I think so because anyhow, this if this exposed to the exposed to the sunlight, then it is having this uh, uh, inside physics is going on that is it is overcoming the band cap energy it is overcoming the band cap energy and but there is no uh, there is no current passing through it since current is flowing through internal resistance not to load yeah that's uh, that's uh, that is i am thinking means uh, I will. Uh, I am not uh, sure with how much it affects the life of a solar panel, 
but i think it will have it should affect degradation will happen degrade certainly the degradation of solar pv panel happen so we are here this uh, types of storage system this primary cells and secondary cells if you see the example of primary cells then we have dry cell that uh, scientific name is zinc manganese oxide and then zinc the silver oxide azim is what i don't i am not confirmed so li associal to that is lithium thionyl lithium thionyl chloride and secondary types is lead acid batteries pv or pvo2 and then we have nickel metal hydride and then we have lithium sulfur dioxide and then lithium ion polymer so all lithium ion batteries are in this secondary types batteries that can be discharged and charged several times or multiple times so both for this uh, our pv application we are dealing with secondary cells so we required we need to be charged and discharged several times we are getting to charge with this uh, pv array and in some application it is also charging through the grid and then again it is supplying power to the load so charging and discharging happens for here for this pv application so this will so here we have to consider the secondary type batteries now let us uh, means here we are dealing with a storage system so we have we need to know various types of parameters of battery so first comes is this battery capacity so this battery capacity is denoted by two base either you represent by this energy capacity or charge capacity so the so the so this energy capacity that gives the true capacity of battery but anyhow this is not commonly used why this is not commonly used because we considered this voltage of battery constant and then this charge capacity comes or we call it as ampere hour capacity that gives that gives measure of watt hour so this uh, charge capacity is more popular commercially so we don't always tell this watt hour capacity we, we always used to tell about this charge capacity that is ampere hour capacity of battery so if we are having this vv voltage across the battery and this the iv current is flowing through battery then we integrate this then we get e watt hour that is energy capacity and during charge this e is denoted as e charge and in this case we, uh, this iv will be positive and during discharging this iv will be negative and this energy capacity will like written like e discharge so i v now how we if this vv will constant then this uh, charge capacity will be this iv time iv integration of this battery current that will give the charge capacity or ampere hour capacity now let us take for the case of a 12 watt battery suppose this full capacity if we see this battery then if it is at fully charged then its voltage comes as 14.3 volt so in a battery this voltage not always constant practically this voltage varies vary depending upon the charging charge condition this is a storage charge inside the battery so let us take this uh, x level that we call it nominal so let us take this is 12 volt and it is having certain depth of discharge and and we nominally take this a uh, state of charge 80% so let us take this 80% of this ampere hour capacity gives the 12 volt battery gives the output 12 volt so this we taken as the nominal voltage rating of the battery and there will be some certain minimum depth depth to which battery can discharge suppose you, if you if anyone gives you 100 hour battery but you cannot discharge it completely so there there will be certain constant like you can use 18 ampere hour capacity of that battery only so if you see nowadays that we have for ev applications we have battery management system so you cannot discharge beyond that depth like if you are if you have discharged 80% 90% then 
this uh, automatically the battery management system used to disconnect the battery from the from the from the uh, from the load so this uh, have, we have to take a care means uh, you cannot discharge the battery completely there should be certain minimum day to to be the battery can be discharged that should be taken care in mind now uh, the uh, coming to the second parameter that is battery c rate the, the, the rate at which the battery is charged or discharged that is called as c rate what is the c rate the rate at which the battery is charged or discharged so if you are having a 20 hour ampere battery and its c rate capacity is c10 then it means that that it means that that battery can supply 2 ampere average current to the load up to 10 hours ideally so this uh, capacity and this battery current and the number of discharge can be related by this relation so here this i is the battery current and c the battery capacity in ampere hour and n is the number of hours of discharge so just you need to remember the remember the uh, si unit of the values so i is the battery current here and c the battery capacity in ampere hour or it is charge capacity of battery and n is the number of hours of discharge now coming to this notation so here if this uh, right hand side if something written then you have to divide and in the left hand side is something written you have to, you need to multiply i have taken example for both the cases like for if it is written for c10 and this battery charge capacity is given by 20 ampere hour then c10 is equivalent to c upon 10 here we have divided because it is written in the right hand side so this c10 value comes as 2 hour now suppose something written on the left hand side like 0.1 c so this c10 is dependent by 0.1 c for the same same c rate capacity for c, for same value of c rate and this uh, charge capacity same 20 ampere hour then 0.1 c will be equivalent to 0.1 into c here we need to multiply and see charge capacity given 20 ampere hour and we have to multiply with 0.1 so it will give you 2 hour so from both the cases we can see that it will give the same amount of c rate and what is the significance of this sorry for interruption so the significance is that a 20 ampere hour battery can supply 2 ampere average current to the load up to the load up to 10 hours ideally but in the practical situation it is even less than that 10 hours now coming to the this next point how this c rate affecting this battery voltage and the discharging rate a discharging current so ideally what we assume this output voltage of battery is constant but this is not the true case if you are if you, if the c rate of the capacity of battery is c10 and it is c5 it c1 c0.5 then this voltage of battery is affecting like this so here we can see that this c10 c10 having suppose if you you have suppose let us take we have a 20 ampere hour battery and c10 means it is written right hand side so you have to divide as we seen the previous case so it is it will take 2 hour
it will two hour it will take two hour and the current will flow 10 ampere continuously the average current will flow to uh, 10 ampere to discharge the 20 ampere hour battery so now for this case for 20 ampere hour battery this will be Four hour, and then this will come as four hour in twenty ampere hour upon four. Then it will be Yes, yes, sorry, sorry, from my side. So it will be two ampere and then. Will be 10 hour, then it will be correct. So, here this is having ampere and then 5 hour, and for it. ampere and correspondingly you can find our and 16 ampere you can correspondingly find the number so as we go along this then we are having this charging current increase and here this id represents the charge current this is affecting so it is affecting due to due, due internal resistance of battery and that is that's it that is that is, that is in itself and depends on the depth of discharge battery or serial capacity of the battery. So now let us come to the next parameter, this battery efficiency. So the battery efficiency, how we can write? So this battery efficiency will be output energy upon input energy. So the output energy coming from the battery that is watt hour load and the input energy that is coming from the PV that is watt hour PV. So there are two conversions taking place while converging from this uh, electrical to chemical energy and this chemical energy, chemical energy to electrical energy. So during charging, we can see that there is conversion from electrical to chemical. So there is loss. So there is loss of electrical to chemical conversion loss and during discharge there is loss of chemical to electric electric conversion loss so this bad uh, so therefore efficiency can be written as watt hour pv minus conversion losses upon watt hour pv and there if you incorporate this uh, conversion losses then you can write conversion losses equal to watt this watt hour ec and this watt hour c therefore this will be the final expression for this battery for the battery efficiency. Now coming to the next uh, parameter. So how, how we can write this energy in power densities of battery. So either there are two ways to represent the energy density in power density of battery. First one is the gravimetric energy density and second is volumetric energy density. So gravimetric, gravimetric energy density, its unit will be watt hour per kg and this volumetric energy density, the unit will be watt hour per liter. So this uh, for certain application, this gravity, gravimetric energy density is uh, more useful while in some application, this volumetric energy density is more useful. Like 
where we need this watt hour per kg that is specific uh, this gravi gravimetric energy density is also called as specific energy density so this uh, this we required in mobile platforms so mobile platforms like ev electric vehicle and hybrid electrical vehicle so their range is determ determined through this gravimetric energy density of the battery and the second one is this volumetric energy density where this uh, space requirement is determined so as the name says this volumetric so it is depend unit is watt hour per liter now similar to energy density we have power density so if we integrate power then we got the energy so here this uh, gravimetric power density will be Reprinted by watt per kg and volumetric power density will be reprinted by bar watt per liter. So, like previous case, this specific power is for this mobile platforms where this isolation and overtake ability will be will be considered from this gravimetric power density and this volumetric uh, power density. This size is specified size is determined from this volumetric power density. So this uh, uh, energy density and power density, there's always a compromise between these two parameters. Either this you have to go, go for higher energy density or you go for higher power density. You cannot get both at is both from the same energy storage device. So generally this uh, lead acid battery having high energy density and lower power density while this lithium ion battery having higher power density as well as higher energy density also uh, lower energy density overtake to ability is required quality okay So it is related with the acceleration only. Means if its acceleration is more, then its uh, overtake capability to capability may be more for a certain uh, beyond the certain uh, speed. So I think this is related to acceleration capability of a EV. It is over the capability. So can anyone tell that what is the energy, uh, any energy storage device that is having higher power density that we generally consider in a uh, microwave application where we need to, where we need to, uh, Overcome this uh, transient. Overcome this uh, transient fluctuation. Can anyone name some uh, energy storage, uh, some uh, storage device whose power density is higher? That we generally used in microwave application. Anyone? So means uh, generally if we see in the microgrid, so if we are having the storage device having higher power density. Yeah, battery is okay, but like heavy higher power density energy storage device, energy storage system that we to improve the steady state response. And that 
तो जनरल एग्जाम्पल फॉर दिस इज बैटरी बट इफ एनी वन आस्क यू लाइक सॉरी आई रिटर्न अपोजिट सो दिस इज हायर एनर्जी डेंसिटी एनर्जी स्टोरेज सिस्टम नाउ हायर पावर डेंसिटी एनर्जी स्टोरेज सिस्टम दैट वी नीड टू रिक्वायर टू इंप्रूव द ट्रांजेंट रिस्पॉन्स here we also we can see that like range be determined from this energy density while this acceleration that be in required quick response or overtake ability so here we need having higher power density so generally for higher to improve the transient response and the example for this is super capacitor the good example it is not uh, uh, related with the battery but this we use for microgrid application where we required to improve the transient response of sudden fluctuation in the power a sudden it can overcome the sudden demand of power while to having this uh, while to provide the steady state power we required this energy storage higher energy storage density energy storage system party asked why transient response matters yeah transient is that is a different field but here just i want to let you know about this uh, 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 meaning of this power density energy density so transient response really matters like if this uh, if your voltage and current values goes beyond certain limit then as, then your relays will trip so uh, then your circuit breaker will trip through the relays so in that case uh, unnecessarily this uh, uh, what you can say unnecessarily this is uh, some part of uh, customers will affected so to avoid the and wanted trips we are having to better response better transient response so that is not a, a scope that is not a scope of this lecture for this course so i just uh, have a glimpse about this the meaning of energy and power density generally the battery is considered as the higher energy storage device while this super capacity one of the good example for higher power density now let us come to this next uh, parameter that is depth of discharge and we have discussed it earlier also earlier slides also so the depth of discharge of battery determines the fraction of power that can be withdrawn from the battery for example if the depth of discharge of battery is given by the manufacturer as 25% then only 25% of battery capacity can be used by the load generally it will be specified as 80% and the state of charge it is just uh, you have to take uh, it will be you have to you have to subtract from you have to subtract from the depth of discharge you will get the uh, state of charge so we will use this expression in solving the problem now here the some important expression comes for design for sizing of the battery how we how we will size the battery so during day condition let us assume this ev will uh, provide the power to the load and the night condition this battery this battery has to provide the power to the load so the energy that battery will supply will be whatever the power demand from the load to be divided by the efficiency of battery so you have to sorry this uh, whatever night upon efficiency of battery that will be the power the energy load the battery will supply 
and this battery the load that battery will supply in brush condition when this autonomous days is zero the days of autonomy is zero so here two important points come this na and nr so nr will be discussed in the next slide so n is na is the days of autonomy n is the days of autonomy while n are the num uh, days days of days for recharge of the battery so here when this days of autonomy we consider the number of contagious days where this pv does not participate so either during the day or in the night the battery has to supply has to Has to provide that amount of energy. So here, this uh, second terms uh, corresponds to this days of autonomy. So either it is autonomy days or it is normal days. In both cases, this uh, uh, in during night, this battery has to supply the energy. While the number uh, during the days of autonomy. I, uh, during the day and during night also this battery has to supply that amount of energy that's why this extra terms comes when this days of autonomy is not zero so it is days of autonomy is written as number of contagious days where pv does not participate so all the, during this days all the power comes from the battery so the battery will supply this amount of energy during the when we are taking the brush condition now how we can find this uh, rating of battery so for that we need to know the depth of discharge from the data sheet of battery after selection of battery we will get the depth of discharge and from there you will get the ampere hour rating for the battery using this using this expression so we will solve we will solve one problem on this uh, battery sizing for the pv system now let us see this next case where we will size the pv array and for this this uh, expression i have written directly what is the amount of energy that pv should supply and this expression is whatever per whatever per day and whatever per night upon this efficiency of battery plus whatever per day whatever night upon efficiency of battery into na upon nr so this uh, this corresponds to if we write down so this corresponds to day load and then this corresponds to night load and then this corresponds to autonomous operation can anyone tell why have we have divided this uh, autonomous operation expression by nr Anyone know the answer of why we have divided this by nr? Uh, 
So NR is the number of days. to replenish charge lost during autonomous operation. Can anyone know why we have divided with NR? So, what is the case? So, we know that during this number of autonomous days, day, during days of autonomy, this battery is providing the power. Battery is providing power. during any days. Like suppose we are having this number of any days and starting from this, we are having the days to again recharge the battery. So during this stage, this battery is providing the power. So that amount of energy has been discharged through the battery. Now we are sizing the PV for a single day. Now for like suppose this uh, 100 watt hour is provided by the battery during this NA days. So this amount of charge, this amount of energy, this will be taken from the PV. Yes, for a single day. So this amount of energy we are taking from the PV to battery in NR days. So in one day, in one day it will be 100 watt hour upon NR. That's why we are dividing with NR, right? I hope it will be clear to all. Yes, by energy requirement per day. So now let us begin to solve the problem. So the, here the first problem is that Consider a PV panel with an intrinsic area of 10 meter per 10 meter square. If the maximum power expected is 1500 watt at a standard insulation of 1 kilowatt per meter squared, then the efficiency of PV panel in percentage will be. So the here, what are the things we have given? If anyone is getting the answer, you can type to the answer in the chat box. So intrinsic area is given as 10 meter square and the maximum power expected is 1500 watt at a standard insulation of one kilowatt per meter square. So how we can write the efficiency of uh, PU panel? So efficiency of PU panel we write as the maximum power 
fifteen percent. Yes, Rajnikanth, you are correct. Very good. So if you represent PM in kilowatt, and then we are having a standard insulation in kilowatt per meter square. Then you have to multiply with intrinsic area. Now you can also write this in watt. Then it will be maximum power in watt, and then it is one thousand watt per meter square into intrinsic area. So this is PM in watt is. Can you are correct? Fifteen hundred watt upon one thousand watt per meter square, and intrinsic area is ten meter square, and the price fifteen hundred watt. So it will, it will give you point one five or fifteen percent. Therefore, fifteen percent is the correct answer. Here, here I have also written this expression. You can refer this expression also. Intrinsic area is the ratio of maximum power in kilowatt upon this efficiency of PV panel into the standard insulation in kilowatt per meter square, and then we can also write in watt. Then maximum power in watt upon efficiency of PV panel into standard insulation is hundred thousand watt per meter square. Now let us come to the next problem. So the next problem is that a battery of nominal voltage nine volt and capacity six ampere hour has depth of discharge at twenty two percent. The state of charge of the battery is how much is the state of charge? So what are the things given? Battery nominal voltage is given as nine volt. And then depth of discharge is given as twenty-two percent. We have to find the state of charge. So we have. We know the state of charge expression. How much can anyone tell answer? This is very easy question. The state of charge expression is one minus depth of discharge in percentage upon hundred into hundred is seventy eight percent. Rajnikanth, very good. So it is one minus. Twenty-two upon hundred into hundred, so it will be seventy-eight percent. So the correct answer is seventy-eight. Now let us come to the next problem. Here the minimum. This first thing I want to tell you that this is multiple slit problem. Here more than option, more than one option are correct. Multiple select question. So here the minimum whatever requirement of a load is eight hundred fifty watt hour with average current demand of fifteen ampere and the system voltage of twelve volt. From given lead AC tubular battery ratings, which all batteries can be used for supplying this load? Assuming, assuming the minimum depth depth of discharge battery is 80 percent. So we have to satisfy the load requirement. So the load requirement, and you have to select the battery from the ampere hour rating and see it. So this is one of the practical question based how we can how we can select the battery 
so what are the load requirement so the load requirement is 850 watt hour so this is the amount of energy that is demanding from the load and this average load current demand this average load current demand is il average so rajni can say 18 ampere hour c5 so it is not correct again verify and they, more, there are more than one option sir correct so il average so these are the battery requirement now this uh, from battery data sheet from battery data sheet this depth of discharge is given maximum depth of discharge so depth of discharge max is 80% or 0.8 so the uh, 120 ampere hour c5 yes rajnikant it is correct g is the correct answer and one more option is correct so you need to find that so by selecting the battery we have to satisfy the load so this amount of energy the battery should provide and this amount of current the battery should provide so let us make one table so let us take one make one table first we write options and then we write ampere hour capacity given of the battery and then the rate capacity of battery is given and then what is the watt hour that battery can provide so since depth maximum depth of discharge is 80% so it will multiplied by with 0.018 into ampere hour and this battery voltage is given as 12 volt because system voltage is given as 12 volt so this we got watt hour now how we can find the peak current of this battery so it will be the ampere hour rating of the battery upon this c rate so first we will fill the options a b then c d e f e h i so let us first fill this ampere hour rating of battery given and see it so it is given as 5 hour and 80 ampere hour 80 ampere hour and 5 hour this 80 ampere hour in hour then 100 ampere hour 5 hour 100 ampere hour 10 hour 100 ampere hour 20 hour then 120 ampere hour 
फाइव आवर वन ट्वेंटी एम पेर आवर टेन आवर वन ट्वेंटी एम पेर आवर ट्वेंटी आवर नाउ वी कैन फील दिस एनर्जी दैट बैटरी कैन सप्लाई सो so the it will be 0.8 into ampere hour at in 14 12 it will give you 384 watt hour and this will be 0.8 into 18 to 12 so it will give you 768 watt hour and c will be 0.8 into 18 into 12 So it will again seven sixty eight watt hour and point eight into hundred into twelve. So it will be nine sixty watt hour. And this is same hundred ampere per hour. So nine sixty watt per hour and nine sixty watt watt per hour. Now this will change one twenty ampere hour into twelve. So it will be eleven. Hundred fifty-two watt hour, so eleven hundred fifty-two watt hour and eleven hundred fifty-two watt hour. This is the energy that can provide the battery can provide. Now, how we can find the current peak current of the peak current of the battery? So it is ampere hour upon the C rate. So ampere hour is forty and C rate is five. So it will be. A ampere, and this will be eighty upon five. It will be sixteen ampere, and eighteen upon ten. It is ten ampere, a ampere, and hundred upon five. It is twenty ampere. Hundred upon ten, ten ampere. Hundred upon twenty, five ampere. One twenty upon five. Twenty-four ampere, one twenty upon twelve, twelve ampere, and one twenty upon twenty-six ampere. Now this load requirement is eight fifty watt per hour. Sorry, oh God. So the load requirement is the load requirement we have seen the load requirement eighty eight hundred fifty watt hour. So this should be greater than eight fifty watt hour to select the battery. So here we can see that this lower this lower part is all coming as more than eight fifty watt hour. 850 watt hour so a option will be incorrect a option will be incorrect p option will be incorrect and c option will be discarded from this energy rating from this uh, capacity of battery that can provide the that amount of energy now this current rating current minimum current rating this average current demand of 15 ampere so this Average current demand of 15 ampere, so it should be the current should be greater than 15 ampere. So here we can see that this is coming 16 ampere, but this uh, watt hour rating is not satisfied. Therefore, the energy capacity is not satisfied. Therefore, discarded. Now this is satisfied 20 ampere, and this is satisfied 24 ampere. So both this energy capacity and this current rating is satisfied by D option and G option. So D option hundred ampere hour, five hour on the C rate is C five, and 
for the option 120 ampere hour charge capacity battery and this C rated C5. So correct answer is D and G. 100 ampere hour C5 and 120 ampere hour C5. D and G are the correct answer. So the rating requirement, both option D and G satisfies. Now coming to the next problem. So a 12 watt battery has an ampere hour rating of seven. So what are the things given? So charge capacity of battery is given as charge capacity of battery is given as seven ampere hour. Assume a constant and voltage of battery is given as 12 volt. Assuming constant voltage for the battery, the watt hour rating of the battery in watt hour. So here they are finding about the energy rating of the battery. So the watt hour rating or energy rating of the battery will be voltage into the charge capacity, charge rating of the battery, AH rating. So voltage is given as 12 volt and AH rating is given as 7 ampere hour. So 12 into 7, it will give you 84 watt hour. So therefore correct answer is 84 watt hour. So how many of you able to solve this problem? So this is also one of the easy problem. Yes, 100 ampere hour C5. Correct, Rajnikant. So this was true for the previous problem. Now for this problem, this 184 watt hour in the correct answer. So if you see this problem for this assignment is not that much tough. If you have to just understand the basic concept of the battery parameters and how you can size the PV array and the battery based on the load requirement and based on the given conditions. Now let us come to the next problem. So here the energy efficiency of a battery is given as 70%. So So the correct Rajnikanth, you are correct, 30% the correct answer. So the energy efficiency of battery is given as 70%. The factor of energy lost in conversion of energy, electrical to chemical energy and chemical energy to electrical energy to that of input energy to the battery. So you have to find the factor of energy lost. So how we can write the if we write the value for efficiency of battery? So we have efficiency of battery is the energy provided to the load upon input energy. The input energy is coming from the PV. So this we know that we can write for the energy efficiency of a battery. So here you can write that since efficiency of energy efficiency of battery is 70%, so it will be watt hour load equal to 0.7 into watt hour PV. So this is the first expression you can assume. Now we know that we can write this what is the amount of energy provided to the load. So it is the input energy, and then we have conversion energy losses. Conversion energy losses. So it includes 
electrical to chemical energy conversion and then chemical to electrical energy conversion both so it is summation of both so conversion losses equal to 0.7 into watt hour pv so just do the simplification you will get 0.3 watt hour pv and right hand side is conversion energy losses so in this problem they are telling about the factor to the input of energy of battery so the input of energy to the battery is watt hour pv so it will be so the conversion energy losses conversion energy losses is 0.3 into input energy that will be 30 percent of that will be 30 percent of input energy so correct answer is 30. correct answer is 30. Rajnikant, you are correct. So let us see the next problem. The next problem is that a battery has a a battery has a weight of two kg and occupies one liter of volume. If the specific energy density is hundred watt hour per kg, then the volumetric energy density is, and you have to give the answer in watt hour per liter. So it is also very easy. You have to just play with the units. So how we can find the watt hour? Watt hour of energy capacity. Energy capacity of battery. We can write this specific energy. into weight so a specific energy is 100 watt hour per kg and weight is 2 kg yes correct Rajnikan, 20 watt hour per liter very good so this energy capacity of battery is 200 watt per hour therefore we can write the volumetric energy density that will be watt hour per volume. So the energy capacity or watt hour capacity is given as 200 watt hour and volume is one liter so therefore it will be 200 watt hour per liter so the correct answer for this problem is 200 watt hour per liter Now let us see the next problem. The next problem is that the depth of discharge of a thousand ampere hour acid battery is seventy percent. The battery is charged fully before supplying a hundred ampere constant load. What is the maximum time in hour for which the battery should be allowed to discharge through the load? Nikant is replying the answer. Kindly, all of you try. I am giving you one minute time. 
no it is incorrect n hour is not correct Nikant, correct. Seven hour is the correct. Ramesh, you are also correct. Seven hour. So, so charge capacity of a battery is given as 100,000 ampere hour and depth of charge given as 70%. Or you can say point seven, and load current is given as this battery to supply a constant load hundred ampere. What is the maximum tower time for which the battery should be allowed to discharge through the load? So we can write this uh, ampere hour battery into load ampere of battery in depth of discharge this is equal to ampere hour of load so you cannot you cannot take the all amount of energy from the battery based on the depth of discharge that amount of energy can be taken to supply uh, provide the energy to the load so ampere hour charge capacity battery is 100 ampere hour and then depth of this charge is 0 0.7 so here this i load is given as 100 ampere and let us take that time for which this maximum time for which this battery should be allowed to discharge through the load so since it is i load is 100 ampere therefore it will be seven hour therefore seven hour is the correct answer now let us see the next problem so this is the good problem so here a PV system with a battery with a battery is installed in a pumping station. So the PV system with a battery is installed in the pumping system. The load profile of the pumping station is as follows. Load one 50 watt, 24 volt light, load which runs for 24 hours. So the uh, at the pumping station, one load is the light load where we have to run it for 24 hours and the second one is the load to that itself water pump and that rating is 96 watt and the voltage rating is 24 volt that we have to run it twice once before sunrise and once after sunset each time the water pump runs for two hours then what is the most suitable battery size in ampere hour that should be installed in the pumping station so here this example, this problem is from this problem is related to the sizing of battery. And sizing of battery is very easy. Sizing of battery and PV both are very easy. You don't uh, you have to just uh, need to know the concept. So what are the things they have given? You have to find uh, the things are given in the night load duration. Night load duration 14 hours. So beyond this 14 hours, this water pump will run. And within this 40, 14 hours, this water pump will run because this is running before the sunrise and after the sunset. So it is running during the night time only. And battery efficiency is given as 0.7. And the state of charge of battery is given as 40%. And days of autonomy 
is given as two. So what are the things given? Night load duration. Night load duration is fourteen hours. And day load duration is. Therefore, day load duration will be ten hours. And battery efficiency, N B, we can write it as eta B. So battery efficiency is point seven. The state of charge of battery is forty percent, and autonomy days is written as ten to five two. So these things are given, and this. Battery voltage nominal. We can also write since this uh, load rating is 24 volt, so the battery nominal voltage will be also 24 volt. So these things 215 ampere hour. No, Rajnikant, it is incorrect. Again, you try. So we have to find the battery, the energy capacity, energy load that the battery will supply in the burst condition. So we write W H load will be W H night, the energy demand during the night, and we have to. Divided by efficiency of battery. So don't forget to divide by efficiency of battery, and then during autonomous stage, this whole during day, either during night, both time, this uh, battery will provide the energy. So we have to divide by N B, and a number of autonomy days will be N A. So what our load that battery we supply in rust condition. So what our load that battery will supply in rest condition? The expression will be this because we have considered the number of autonomy days also. So let us find the what our day. So during uh, day hour only this. Uh, Light is running, so it is capacity is 50 watt. So here we can see that 50 watt, and daylight day load duration is 10 hours. So 50 watt into 10 hour. Fifty watt hour. What our night is? So twice we have to run the pump load. So two into 96. And it is running for two hours. So this is for pump load, and then this uh, light load is running for the whole duration. So 50 watt into 14 hour. So this is for pump load. So it will be give you 384. Watt hour plus 700 watt hour, so it will give you 1084 watt hour. Now I think we know all the value. We can 
we have to just put the all these values so here whatever night is 1084 watt per hour efficiency of battery is 0.7 and this day plus night 500 plus 1084 watt per watt hour upon efficiency battery 0.7 so if you calculate then you will get 1548.57 plus 4525.7143 watt hour so you will get 6074.3 watt hour so this is amount of this amount of the energy that could battery will supply in the worst condition so what will be the ampere hour rating of the battery or charge capacity of the battery therefore here i want to write one more expression so ampere hour rating of the battery will be as battery equal to w s the energy that's need to supplied by the battery upon depth of discharge incorrect 560 incorrect into v v nominal battery voltage so this is the important expression right so we got the answer 422 ampere hour so the correct answer for this problem is 422 ampere hour is the answer uh sir can you check again uh, the uh, answer because uh, uh, we not considered in like wh load uh, in last multiplication of na yes we have w considered air i uh, mistakenly not right written so if you do simplification i think it will come I have already solved the problem. I am just writing here. Yes, it is coming. Ramesh, it will come if you multiply. I uh, forget to write n the number of autonomy, number of autonomy days. Right. So again, coming to the uh, sir, one more uh, ma, uh, one more question, sir. Yeah. What is what is the auto meaning uh, auto money meaning? So the days of autonomy that in that days the PV is not providing the power. This all the power will come from the battery. So in the normal days, the power is coming from the during day the power is coming from the pv while in the night the power is coming from the battery so in the normal days we have so this is for normal days like here this is for normal days here we have considered only the days the 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 energy demand during the day while this is for the autonomy days during autonomy days all the power are either it is day or it is night both the power both the energy 
that fulfilled by the battery only so in the autonomy that means this pv is not 20 function yeah that that means that means uh, uh, twenty four hours is called one atomic. Yeah, during an uh, autonomy days, either day or night, both uh, we have to take. Means for whole day. If it is a fixed that uh, either day or the night, the power is fixed, then you can directly multiply with twenty four. But it is written that during daytime days. Energy demand is different, but at night energy demand is different. That's why we have written separately, whatever day plus whatever night. But if it is written like this, either day, either night, this uh, demand is same. So we don't need to bifurcate this for autonomy days. So you have to direct multiply this power demand into the number of hours that is 24. Right? Tamis? Did you got, got it, it or not? Okay. Got it, sir. Yes. Okay, so uh, coming to the last problem. So I have not taken today that much problem. So this is the last problem, question number nine. So referring to the previous question eight, what is the energy required in watt power, watt hour from the P panel so that the battery can be replenished in a day? So we have to do the PV array sizing. So here you can directly write that uh, it is in this question they are showing that what is the energy required from the PV panel so that you can so that you can No, no, it is incorrect. So it is asking about watt hour. So first writing down the expression of watt hour rating for PV. So it is WH day plus WH night upon efficiency of battery plus this WS day plus WS night upon efficiency of battery into NA upon NR. So this whatever requirement that should be fulfilled by the PV. So what is the difference in the expression for this battery and load? It is quite simple. So if this if they ask about battery, then you can write WH load. So during day, this battery will not supply the energy. So they will be vanished. So you can directly write, so this will be, I will use the another color. I'm telling how you can remember the expression. So what our load? So this will be vanished for this uh, bat, uh, load. So for battery, and it it will directly come this what our night upon efficiency of battery because the battery will supply the power during the night. Now we have to consider the autonomy days. So in autonomy days, both during day plus during night, all the power coming from the battery, so it will be divided by the efficiency of battery into N. While for the PV, this day will also count because during day this this is providing the power, and this night is also counting because this amount of power we need to recharge the battery. So WS night upon efficiency of battery, 
and for this autonomous autonomy days this uh, wh day plus wh night upon efficiency weight in number of autonomous days and this this amount of energy that is that is uh, discharged from the battery so you have to divide by the number of recharge days so that amount of energy that we required from the pv so coming back to the problem so what our pv will be what our day 500 plus what our night is 1084 divided by 0.7 plus 500 plus 1084 upon 0.7 and na is 1 and number of recharge days is 1 because the battery can be replenished in day so here this denote that number of recharge day is 1 so you will get the energy required from the pv panel will be 2400 and 2048.57 plus 4525.714 so you will get 6574.28 whatever so this is the answer any doubt no sir neeraj yes mohan chinabram rajnikant prabhakaran i think many of you you live if there is no doubt then we will meet uh, on the next sunday thank you all for yes, attending sir. the session and just enjoy thank the you. learning if ac motor is driven by this pv how to account for power factor of motor so if ac motor is driven by pv the power factor you need to interface this uh, inverter first so yeah, you need to interface the inverter either means if you are using the single stage means inverter is as uh, uh, you have to use the i don't know you are using single stage power to converter or dual stage power to converter like dc dc converter and again convert to ac system then we have to interface the inverter dc to ac and now based on the design you can see the based on the control you have to check the power factor means uh, either you are getting not for your curve fitting i have not gone through these things these are the means research based materials but i have not used this for your curve fitting yes okay sorry sorry you are referring this uh, uh, what the last slide okay last today session i thought you are asking about your some research 
topic for your carpeting yes uh, i will try to cover i will try to cover uh, in the subsequent uh, session i hopefully i will try to cover in the revision session and uh, i i didn't get your this question I means how uh, this uh, what uh, things you want to ask power factor of motor this power factor is simply that that is the you can use the expression but i don't know in which way, in which aspect you are asking okay okay no problem so thank you for joining the session and we will meet on the next session okay good night